Hi everyone, I'm Steve Brunton, and I'm going to talk today about modern Koopman operator theory and how it's changing what is possible in dynamical systems uh, and essentially addressing some of the modern challenges we face in, uh, in data-driven dynamical systems. So what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to break this up into parts, uh, kind of these different focus areas of what is challenging in dynamics now and how Koopman operator theory is starting to address some of these challenges. Uh, this is all joint work with Nathan Kutz um, and our collaborators, Bing Brunton, Josh Proctor, Ulrika Kaiser, Bethany Lush, and Kathleen Champion. Uh, so this is kind of work we've been doing for, for the last several years, thinking about how we can use Koopman analysis to start to solve these data-driven dynamical systems problems. Uh, this work has been supported uh, very generously by DARPA, the Army Research Office, the Air Force Office of Scientific Research, and the uh, Air Force Research Laboratory. So it's been great that there's been a lot of interest and support to develop these techniques. Uh, and we've also been working with collaborators and colleagues across the country and across the world um, to kind of develop some of these methods. So I want to introduce, um, I want to start off by just kind of framing some of the key challenges and open problems in, in data-driven dynamical systems as I see them. And this will frame some of the progress and some of the things we've chosen to work on with Koopman operator theory. So here we have a dynamical system, x dot equals f of x. Here x is the state of your system. This is kind of the minimal set of variables needed to describe the evolution of the system in time. F is a, a function, a vector field that tells you how the system changes at a given state in time. In general, this could be a function of time. It could also have some parameters. It could have some control inputs, but I'm just keeping it simple for now. Uh, you know, we're talking about these dynamical systems. And the fact that these are nonlinear really are, uh, is kind of the central challenge in this all. Okay, so I'm just going to walk through some of these, these challenges as I see them. Uh, this is not comprehensive or complete, but these are, are some of the open problems that have framed our thinking. So probably the, one of the biggest or one of the two biggest problems is usually when we do dynamical systems, we actually start with a dynamical system. You start with x dot equals f of x. Maybe um, I'm analyzing a physical system like a pendulum on a cart. And so I write down a Lagrangian, and I write down the Euler-Lagrange equations, and I have x dot equals f of x. I then look at fixed points and periodic orbits and stability and so on and so forth. But increasingly for systems of interest, we don't actually have access to these equations or they might be partially known or partially unknown. So there's no equation for your brain or for the climate or a disease spreading across a country, right? Like there's no governing fundamental true physics equation uh, that we can, we can rely on. So discovering equations from data is very important, something Koopman can help with. Um, fundamentally, we are looking at nonlinear dynamical systems. So the theory of linear systems is very well understood. We know uh, a lot about how to analyze x dot equals a matrix A times x. We look at the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of that matrix, and we can kind of analyze the behavior in terms of those dynamics. But nonlinear dynamics are still very poorly understood. And even kind of an epsilon nonlinearity or even a quadratic nonlinearity uh, really kind of confounds our understanding. Okay, we don't even know if solutions exist and are unique for some of these systems. Uh, and that's really something Koopman's going to help with. So I'm a control theorist. I don't just want to model and understand nonlinear dynamics. I essentially want to uh, use those models for estimation and control tasks to manipulate the behavior of my system. So I think we should be thinking about this in the context of control. Um, chaos, transients, intermittent, and uncertain phenomena are still very challenging. So a lot of what we develop up here are still quite challenging for chaotic systems or systems with big intermittent phenomena. Uh, or non-stationary systems. So that's a very important um, challenge. And then uh, multi-scale physics. I think this is one of the grand challenge problems uh, of this kind of big data era is in the past a lot of what we've done has been really applying analysis and computations uh, and these, these kind of dynamical systems models to uniscale physics and really now this multi-scale kind of hierarchical physics in space and time uh, we're starting to get the tools to, to tackle this, but this is really where we want to go. So all of these, these uh, methods you should be thinking, can I apply this to an actual multi-scale problem like turbulence or climate or disease or neuroscience? Okay? There's things I'm leaving off here. So for example, I think uh, noise and stochasticity is a huge one. Okay? So you know, even just computing derivatives 
from no noisy data is still a pretty big challenge. Um, and that's, that's almost like a foundational, before you even get started in dynamics, there's this uh, noise and stochasticity problem and uncertainty, okay? But these are the ones we're gonna talk about in the context of Koopman for now. Okay, good. So I'm gonna jump into uh, basically just focusing in on nonlinearity. That's really where Koopman analysis um, has the most obvious ability to impact is making nonlinear dynamical systems more amenable to linear analysis. Okay, so Koopman analysis is basically going to be a coordinate transformation into some special measurement coordinate where nonlinear systems look linear and we can use our textbook linear analysis on those strongly nonlinear systems. Okay, so uh, Bernard Koopman back in 1931 introduced uh, this operator th perspective for dynamical systems, which really dramatically changed how, um, how people think about, about dynamical systems. And it's interesting that it, it's, it's been you know, over 80 years since his original paper, uh, and only recently has it started having a resurgence in the, the kind of modern data-driven dynamical systems community. Uh, and, and we'll talk about why it maybe took so long. But really, in, in, the, in the, the decades between Koopman and now, the geometric perspective of Poincaré has really dominated. So that's that, uh, in terms of that state vector, x dot equals f of x, and the geometry of fixed points and periodic orbits and stable and unstable manifolds and things like that. What Koopman showed, um, and this was in his famous 1931 uh, paper in the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, he showed that for dynamical systems, if you think about the Hilbert space of all possible measurements you could take of that system, so this is a infinite dimensional space of all measurements you could take, not just of x, but x squared and cosine x and arctan of x and, and so on, so this infinite set of measurements you could take, the nonlinear dynamics in that measurement space look like a big infinite dimensional linear operator that evolves those measurements forward in time. Okay, so what Koopman showed is that you can essentially lift your nonlinear dynamics in a state space representation into this infinite dimensional measurement representation and your nonlinear dynamics here become linear dynamics up here. And you're trading complexity, so it's very hard now to work with this infinite dimensional linear operator. So we're trying to find approximations and embeddings and representations. Okay, so that's where it's going now. Um, you know, but back in 1931, people weren't thinking of big data and big computations and machine learning, but now we're, we're so focused on data science, and so his perspective in terms of measurement equations actually fits very nicely. So measurements is just a fancy word for data, or vice versa. This Koopman theory now is very relevant as we have increasing amounts of data that we can fit these approximately big linear models to. Okay, uh, interestingly, when Koopman's paper came out, it was actually central, uh, a central kind of missing piece in the proof of the ergodic theorem by uh, John von Neumann and George Burkhoff, who kind of independently proved this, this ergodic theorem, and they used Koopman's uh, operator theory as this missing piece in, in, uh, in their theories. Okay, so actually in the 30s, this was a very famous paper, extremely pivotal and influential in the ergodic theorem, which was one of the most important uh, milestones in dynamical systems. But then kind of the modern perspective really didn't come into play until, uh, until much later. Uh, and there's a great perspective in PNAS on the ergodic theorem, uh, statistical mechanics, and kind of this history of Koopman and von Neumann and Burkhoff. So very interesting paper. I recommend you read it. And so really this uh, Koopman operator perspective didn't really come back into uh, the mainstream focus for decades. And uh, largely it's responsible, or, sorry, largely Igor Mezic and his collaborators work uh, is responsible for bringing this back into the mainstream in the spotlight. So this is a famous paper, um, 2005 paper, and there's some earlier kind of, you know, 1999 and 2004 uh, up until now, where Igor and collaborators really brought this uh, Koopman perspective back into data-driven dynamical systems and showed that this linear operator representation of your nonlinear system can be very useful. If you compute its eigenvalues and eigenvectors, you get a spectral decomposition that you can use for um, analysis, prediction, and control. Okay, so uh, very useful now. 
in this in this uh, kind of modern data driven era era now that we have fast computers, tons of data, this um, Koopman perspective is becoming very popular. Uh, and here's a cool kind of snippet from this paper where you can actually see this Koopman mode decomposition in terms of eigenvalues, eigenfunctions, initial conditions. And here is uh, what's known as a continuous eigenvalue spectrum. So that's kind of something we'll talk about later for, for interesting mixing and chaotic systems. Um, and so, you know, I, I mentioned that the geometric perspective of Poincaré has really dominated. This is, this is um, you know, a state space model in terms of some nonlinear equations. You can integrate trajectories through these equations and you can get an update and you can watch particles and trajectories go through these dynamics. And you can look at what are the separatrices, what are the invariant manifolds, what are the attractors. That's what we've been doing for decades. And it's very useful. What the Koopman operator perspective does is instead it thinks about measurements of the system G. So G could be any measurement of X in this Hilbert space of measurements. It could be cosine of the first component of X times the third component squared minus the square root of X2. Okay, it could be this arbitrarily complex function of, of my state. And so G lives in an infinite dimensional Hilbert space. And if I picked a basis, you could kind of write this down as an infinite vector of coefficients in, in that basis, maybe in a Taylor series or a Fourier basis. And what the Koopman operator, this K operator does, is it advances those measurements forward one time step. So it basically takes that state X, it advances it one time step, and then it remeasures the system at that next time step. So the Koopman operator advances all possible measurement functions one time step in the future. Um, and so what people are trying to do now is find finite dimensional approximations of this Koopman operator. And if you can find a finite dimensional approximation, that's a matrix. It's a linear matrix that advances measurements forward in time. That can be very useful. You can compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors and, and get future prediction, estimation, and control. But finding a closed uh, finite dimensional approximation of this infinite dimensional operator is very challenging and it's been the focus of intense research efforts uh, over the last decade. Okay, And so I'm going to kind of give away some of the story. What we know now is that we're trying to identify eigenfunctions of this Koopman operator because eigenfunctions of this Koopman operator are these special eigen measurements that if I measured my nonlinear system in those exact measurements, those measurements would behave linearly in time. They'd have exponential behavior or oscillatory pure tone sine and cosine behavior um, and you know, linear dynamics. So that's what we're trying to find are eigenfunctions of this. And if I found a bunch of eigenfunctions, I could span a Koopman invariant subspace. And if I restricted my Koopman operator to that subspace, I would get a matrix, a finite dimensional matrix. So for example, if I found three Koopman eigenfunctions, I would get a three by three matrix that evolves those measurements linearly forward in time. Very useful. Okay, good. Uh, so very simple example to show you that this works um, and you can read more about this and just play around with this in MATLAB. If I have this simple nonlinear dynamical system in two state variables, x1 and x2, notice that the first variable is decoupled. So there's no x2 dependence and this is purely linear. The second variable is nonlinear and if lambda is a fast eigenvalue, if it's more stable than mu, more negative real part, then x2 will very rapidly equal x1 squared. And so you can see this slow manifold in red here, and my initial conditions rapidly adhere onto this manifold and slowly go down to the origin if both of these are stable. And so what Koopman theory says is if I take, a, if I enrich my measurement space, if I don't just measure x1 and x2, but I also measure x1 squared, a nonlinear measurement, in this measurement space, these three measurements, I can write my nonlinear system as an actual linear dynamical 3x3 three three system. So this is like a, an A matrix. It's a real linear system in terms of these nonlinear measurements. Let's just val verify that this works. So y1 is x1. x1 dot equals mu times x1. Good. Y2 is X2, so Y2 dot is lambda X2, that's lambda X2, minus lambda X1 squared, which is minus lambda Y3. Good, so that nonlinear equation became linear by adding Y3. And here's the kind of the, the crux. What's Y3 dot? Well, Y3 is X1 squared, so the derivative is 2 X1 X1 dot 
which is 2x1 mu x1, 2 mu x1 squared. So this derivative is 2 mu x1 squared. And so even that equation is linear in terms of this y3 variable. The derivative of y3 is just 2 mu times y3. And so here is a MATLAB simulation of this 3 by 3 linear system. And you can see that if I project onto the uh, x1 and x2 variables, I recover this slow manifold behavior. So this is a super simple example showing that nonlinear dynamical systems can be embedded in a linear framework with the right measurements of the system. This is a really simple toy example that works. Okay? And that's what we're trying to do is find these good measurements y for, for other dynamical systems that give these linear representations. Because I can predict the future in this system as far in the future as I like without having to do some nonlinear uh, integration. Okay, and then you can look at the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix to find your Koopman eigenfunctions. Okay, so that's a case that works. This is a case that doesn't work. X dot equals X squared. I mean, this should be even simpler. But if I look at X dot equals X squared, um, so I think a lot of us know what the behavior of this dynamical system is. Um, I always ask my students what, what characterizes this dynamical system. And I like to joke that you can't say this in an airport because this thing has finite time blow up. Okay, so this differential equation will go to infinity in a finite amount of time, which is kind of nasty. So let's try the same thing. We're going to build this nonlinear measurement and augment our measurements with an x squared. So if I take the derivative of y1 or x, y1 dot does in fact equal y2. That's good. But the derivative of y2 is 2x x dot which is 2x times x squared, which is 2x cubed. And so it's not in the span. It's not a linear combination of these functions. So if I take the derivative of y2, I get a, an x cubed, which is not in my measurement space. So I need to add an x cubed. But then when I take the derivative of my x cubed, I get 3x dot x squared, which is 3x to the fourth. So now I need to add an x to the fourth. And the basic idea is that this never closes. I always need higher and higher order polynomials. And so I would eventually need infinitely many, um, an infinite Taylor expansion to represent the solution of, uh, of this, this system. So this doesn't close. I don't get a finite dimensional model. If I increase the order, I do get closer and closer to this white line, which is the true finite blow up solution but it's a pretty slow convergence and it doesn't work very well. So one takeaway is just arbitrarily choosing a Taylor series or a Fourier basis for your Hilbert space probably isn't going to work. These are going to be very specialized bases where you get finite dimensional representations of Koopman. And in fact, it's based on eigenfunctions. So the right representation are eigenfunctions of the Koopman operator. And polynomials might be a bad basis to represent these dynamics in. So what you can do, and I remember asking um, Clancy Rowley this once. We were uh, waiting for a bus at a workshop, and I asked him, you know, I told him about this, uh, this closure issue, and I think he wrote down the solution, phi of x equals e to the minus 1 over x. And this happens to be one of those magic measurement functions, one of these eigenfunctions of Koopman, that if you just measured your system in this phi coordinate, phi dot equals phi. So it's linear dynamics in phi. Uh, but notice that it's not just a simple polynomial expression. It's not easily representable in a finite Taylor series. Okay? And so this is, um, so there are these special coordinates, but you need to be able to find these for much more complicated systems like turbulence or the brain. So the, that's the burning question. How do you find these eigenfunctions? How do you represent these eigenfunctions for more and more complex dynamical systems? Okay. Uh, so Koopman eigenfunctions define these invariant subspaces. We start with nonlinear dynamics, x dot equals f of x. We want to find phi of x, these special coordinates phi, so that they're linear dynamics in these measurement coordinates. So this is just a linear dynamical system. And so what we can do is we can take the chain rule of the derivative of phi with respect uh, ddt of phi of x, and we get the gradient of phi dotted with the time derivative of x. So grad phi times x dot. And x dot is just f of x. So this is what the time derivative, the chain rule of my time derivative is. Grad phi dotted with my dynamics f. And that has to equal lambda phi. Okay, so that equals lambda phi. That is a partial differential equation generator for Koopman eigenfunctions. So any Koopman eigenfunction has to be a solution of this PDE, at least in, for the smooth eigenfunctions in continuous time. 
So I moved to continuous time dynamics because it's easier for now. There's also a more general Koopman theory for discrete time, finite time updates. Uh, but a smooth, continuous eigenfunction for these smooth dynamics has to satisfy this equation. And so now if we revisit this x dot equals x squared, what I can do is I can write down a Laurent series for phi. I can, I can allow it to have a, a forward Taylor expansion in terms of powers of x, x, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, and also a negative kind of this uh, inverse power series 1 over x, 1 over x squared, 1 over x cubed. That's called a Laurent series. And I can take that Laurent series with arbitrary coefficients, plug it into this PDE, and when I solve for what those coefficients have to be for this to be true, what pops out is e to the minus 1 over x. So for low dimensional dynamical systems where you know f of x, you can actually solve for eigenfunctions analytically uh, using Taylor or Laurent series with this generator. And now this is actually a homework problem in my math class. So I don't know if you can see here, uh, but basically the eigenfunction, they've solved for it on, on the whiteboard in my office. Okay, so we know how to do this now. But what do you do in practice when you don't have uh, like a really simple x dot equals x squared in one variable where you know the dynamics? Okay, so that's kind of a very, very simple toy problem. We want to be taking the data-driven perspective and doing Koopman on real problems of interest like um, neuroscience, disease modeling, turbulence control. So what do we do in practice when we can't solve a Laurent series or just write down an eigenfunction? So people look at the dynamic mode decomposition. This is one of the workhorse algorithms to approximate the Koopman operator. And so if I had a movie of vortex shedding past a, a cylinder, so this is a fluid flow past a cylinder. Here are snapshots in that movie as it evolves in time. So you get this periodic von Karman vortex shedding. If I took all of that data, what I can do is I can find the best fit linear operator that advances that data forward in time, and that should be related to the Koopman operator. So this was a connection uh, that Clancy, Rowley, Igor, and their collaborators made uh, in this kind of landmark JFM paper in 2009, where they connected this dynamic mode decomposition algorithm. This algorithm was developed by Peter Schmidt uh, earlier. They applied this algorithm and, and connected it to Koopman operator. So the result of DMD, so what DMD does is essentially it takes this data, it stacks it into big data matrices where each column is an entire state vector stacked into a tall column vector. So x1 is my, all of my measurements at time 1, x2 is all of my measurements at time 2, and so on. So you build x, and then x prime is my matrix shifted one time step in the future. So these are my measurements, and these are my me measurements one time step in the future. And what DMD does is it tries to find this best fit linear operator A that advances x into x prime. So you basically write down the equation x prime equals A times x, and you try to solve for A using pseudo inverse and regression. You try to solve for A. And DMD is a little fancier than this because this A matrix would be gigantic, maybe million by million or billion by billion. So essentially, now what I'm trying to, what, what we try to do is find the dominant eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A. And A is starting to look a lot like the Koopman operator. The Koopman operator advances measurements forward in time linearly. And so even though this is a nonlinear dynamical system, we're trying to find the best fit linear operator that advances those measurements, and then we're trying to look for eigenvectors, eigenfunctions, and eigenvalues of this. And it works remarkably well for data that is periodic or quasi-periodic. So this vortex shedding is periodic. DMD works great. It's not as good for transients and intermittent phenomena, so you need a little bit fancier version of the regression and, and data, but we'll talk about that later. Okay. And so uh, the DMD is kind of like this, this hybrid marriage of uh, principal components analysis in space. So you pull out the dominant spatial coherent structures and then the Fourier transform in time. So you want to find dominant modes that are coherently oscillating in space, that are, that are coherent in space and have a fixed oscillation or decay in time. Okay, So that's what the DMD algorithm does. And again, uh, this, this 2009 JFM paper connected the, the results of DMD algorithm with this Koopman theory, this infinite dimensional linear operator. So very important. And since then, DMD has become one of the workhorse algorithms for Koopman. 
Okay, so the DMD algorithm itself was originally introduced in the fluids dynamic dynamics community by Peter Schmidt. In fact, uh, there's this APS abstract from 2008 by Schmidt and Sesterhen where, where they presented this. Uh, and this is essentially a very useful tool for extracting these, these coherent structures that, that uh, have uh, simple time dynamics as this nonlinear system evolves. And that's exactly what we want our Koopman eigenfunctions to do. We want to find these magic special measurements, these, this magic mixture of, of measurements that if I measured my system in exactly that way, I'd get pure tone sine waves or exponentials, these kind of linear dynamics. And it turns out that's what dynamic mode decomposition does. And that connection, again, was made by this, um, in this great paper by Clancy, Igor, uh, Shervin, Phil, and Dan, where they essentially showed that the, the Koopman operator is connected to this dynamic mode decomposition. And they applied it to analyze this really rich flow, which is a jet in a cross flow, uh, and to pull out these coherent modes that oscillate at a fixed frequency in time. Since then, there's been a lot of great work uh, kind of shoring up this connection and developing this connection. And a lot of it's been done in fluid dynamics. That's kind of one of these hot areas where Koopman and data-driven methods are really coming together. Um, so there's a great paper by Shervin Bagheri where he analyzes the Koopman mode decomposition of the flow past a cylinder, which is a very nice kind of closed solution for um, one of our canonical benchmark problems in fluids. This is a great paper. I highly recommend you read it. Um, here are some cool fluid modes on the right. And then there's also been a really nice connection between uh, Koopman operator theory and the resolvent analysis, the resolvent mode decomposition, which is a very powerful technique in fluid dynamics to understand the sensitivity of flows and which structures will be amplified and which structures will decay in time. So there's this great paper by uh, Sharma, Mezich, and McKeon. Um, really, really nice connection again, to flow structures, resolve and analysis, and Koopman, okay? So this is exploding. Uh, the interest in Koopman is really, really growing. We have efficient algorithms now to start approximating it. We have rich data from physical systems. Uh, and the Koopman operator is giving us this ability to represent these nonlinear systems in a linear framework under certain conditions, okay? So we're going to talk a lot more about Koopman. We're going to talk about how you can um, use it for control. We're going to find how do you represent Koopman eigenfunctions and discover them. What are these nonlinear measurements of your system? Uh, we're going to talk about chaotic systems and systems with what are known as continuous eigenvalue spectra. And we're also going to talk about multi-scale systems. Okay, so there's going to be multiple parts. This is going to build up. But I hope you're kind of interested and excited about Koopman theory as a possible uh, framework to start handling strong nonlinearity with data. Okay, thank you. <laughs>